In this video I am going to show you exactly how Brian Dean built 5,660 backlinks last month without sending a single outreach email. His secret? A new strategy called reverse outreach. In this case study I'm going to show you exactly how he did it, step by step. The big problem with link building? Scale. Outreach-based strategies like the skyscraper technique still work great when done right. But there's one big problem with most link building strategies. They don't scale. And if you're in a competitive niche, you need to do link building at scale. For example, take a look at Backlinko. According to SEMrush, they have 47.3k referring domains. That sounds great. Until you look at some of their competitors. Like Yoast, 67.2k referring domains. Search Engine Journal, 214k referring domains. Or other huge brands in the marketing space, like HubSpot, 341k referring domains. Let's say he wanted to close my link gap with Yoast using email outreach. He is currently about 20k referring domains behind Yoast. And let's assume that 5% of the outreach emails that hasn't result in a backlink. That means he would have to send 400k outreach emails just to catch up to Yoast. Plus, this assumes that Yoast isn't going to get any more backlinks during that time. Which isn't going to happen. So when he did the math, he realized that he needed a different approach to link building. One that could scale, big time. After months of testing, he finally found it. It's called reverse outreach. Here's how it works. How reverse outreach flips the script on traditional link building. Outreach completely flips the script on outreach-based link building. Instead of reaching out to bloggers and journalists, you have them come to you. Specifically, you target keywords that bloggers and journalists search for and create content that they want to link to. Let's look at a real-life example. A few months ago he published this post on his site. This post was designed specifically to get backlinks from journalists. More on that later. He also made sure to optimize that post around keywords that bloggers and journalists search for. Like TikTok monthly users, how much time people spend on TikTok and TikTok downloads by country. Sure enough, that post eventually ranked number two for TikTok users and started to rank for dozens of other keywords too. Yes, this brought in some traffic, but that's not really the point. The people searching for these terms aren't really his target audience. The goal with this content was simple, get backlinks from authority sites. And that's exactly what happened. That page now has editorial backlinks from Bloomberg, Business Insider, and dozens of other authority news sites and blogs. With that, let's jump into the step-by-step -step process. Step number one, find journalist keywords. Your first step is to find a journalist keyword. A journalist keyword is just like it sounds. It's a keyword that journalists use when researching or writing an article. For example, this page from Backlinko is optimized around the journalist keyword social media usage. Who searches for that keyword? A blogger or journalist writing about how popular social media is. When they do, his page gets in front of them with the data they need. And they cite me as a source in their articles. In fact, that single page has 11.5k total backlinks. 95% plus of which came from reverse outreach. The question is, how do you find journalist keywords? People also ask boxes. Questions that are looking for data. These are usually questions that bloggers and journalists want answers to. If you get stuck, just search for a different keyword, it can take a few to get going. Or expand the people also ask boxes to reveal more commonly asked question. Next look for a page on a competitor site with a lot of links then find the journalist keywords that the page ranks for for example you can see that this page from Backlinko has a lot of backlinks and if you look at the keywords that the page ranks for you'll find lots of journalist keywords target trending topics specifically trending topics that don't have a lot of easy to find data sources that way you can be the go to source for data. On this emerging topic step 2 outline your content your next step is to outline your article specifically you want to answer the most interesting questions that journalists have around the topic this means most traditional keyword research tools are out instead you need to think of the types of data someone would need when writing an article on that top for example his stats post about DuckDuckGo covers pretty much everything a journalist would want to know specifically each of that post subheadings covers a key subtopic about the search engine step number three collect your data Next, it's time to gather all of the data that you're going to include on your stats page. Where you find your data depends on your topic. But in general, here are some great places to find data for stats pages. Statista. Statista is a curated database of stats on pretty much any industry under the sun. Next, the work for us, pages. If you're writing about a brand, check out their job listings. Companies love to entice potential hires by bragging about user numbers, revenue growth, and more. Next, S1 filings. U.S. public companies have to share key business metrics with shareholders each quarter. Next, 
Google News Google News is a goldmine of industry data in the form of press releases, milestone news stories, 15% of Americans now consider themselves vegan, data from industry publications, quotes from experts. Now let's move on to step number four, optimize your stats page. Now it's time to organize and optimize your stats page. Here's how, snippet bait. In fact, this approach has helped his stat pages show up in dozens of featured snippets. All you need to do is format your stats page with a subheading optimized around a journalist keyword. Then, provide a short and sweet answer to that question right below that subheading. Rinse and repeat for every stat on your page that you can. Next, include visuals and charts. Visuals help your stat pages get more backlinks for two reasons. First, they give bloggers a visual they can use in their content. And they'll usually link back to you as the image source. Backlink from visual. Second, according to the Victoria University of Wellington, visuals make your content more credible. Add lots of tables. Tables can help you rank as a table featured snippet. Include crunchy stats. Crunchy stats are bite site stats that are easy to understand at a glance. And the more crunchy stats you include, the more links you'll get. In fact, most of the links that I get to my stat pages are people citing crunchy stats. Stat backlink anchor text. For example, here's a crunchy stat from my TikTok stats page. This is a stat that anyone can understand in three seconds and is easy to cite in an article. The crunchy stat is cited in the article. Examples of crunchy stats include industry size, company revenue, the number of people doing a thing, time spent doing X, percent growth over time. That's not to say 100% of your stats need to be crunchy stats. For example, here's a relatively complex stat from one of my pages, but you want to include as many crunchy stats as you can, especially towards the top of the page. Step number five, get backlinks. Depending on your content, the keywords you targeted, and your domain rank it can take some time for your stats page to pick up some traction. I like to check the page's organic rankings periodically, just to see if it's starting to rank for long tail keywords. If so, that's a great sign. But yeah, it can take three to four months for your page to start to rank and get passive link. But once it does, you sort of get into a link tornado situation you get links. Those links push your rankings higher, so you get more links, and the cycle continues. For example, this page continues to rack up new links each and every month, which helps it rank higher in Google for its existing keyword, and rank for completely new terms. He also likes to review and update these pages at least once per quarter. That way, all of your data is up to date, and you keep getting that temporary freshness boost that comes from a legit content update. So yeah, that's reverse outreach, his go-to link building strategy right now. Now I'd like to hear from you. Have you tried getting passive links before? If so, how did it go? Let me know in the comments section below.